Happy Wednesday, everyone. Hi. We are back. <laughs> I see everyone in the comments. Hello, 13 Wolves. Hello, Esther. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Hi, Sonia. Hi, Joyce. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Nafisa. Um, your book is in the mail to you. Um, hi, Yvonne. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, so welcome to our weekly live call. Uh, we do this call every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My name is Bola Shokunbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Finance. We are an online financial empowerment platform and media company for women. And Yasmir, my co-host, is going to introduce herself. Hey everyone, I'm Yasmir. I'm the content creator for uh, Clever Girl Finance, joining me from New York City. Yes, so welcome everyone. Hi Andrea, hi KH. Uh, excited to have you guys here. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about how to save money on a low income. Um, you guys probably have you know, you've probably read about and heard about different ways to save. We're going to talk about some specific ways um, in addition to what you might already know to help you save money if you have a low income or just a limited budget, especially given the fact that everything is tight in terms of just <laughs> everything, basically, with what's going on, you know, being on the verge of a recession or already in a recession. So we're going to talk about that. But before we get into that, um, we have some good news. Yes, we got a compliment. Oh, thank you, Vaughn. <laughs> so the good news is that the books, the final copies of the books are here. Well, I have my copy, <laughs> my copies. And you guys should start getting yours in the mail soon. I know Amazon is planning to deliver on July 6th, which is the official launch date. But I'm so excited to have this. And because we have this, we're doing another giveaway. So this is my new book that comes out next week. Wednesday or Tuesday, July 6th, 2022. And this book is all about just my personal story, um, what has led me to this place, being a black woman in America, raising my kids, building a business, facing imposter syndrome and mental health challenges and all of that. So July 6th, so we wanna give away one of these books. And um, if you got this book in a uh, giveaway, the uh, galleys, I would love to know if you have read it, what you think about it but yeah so we're just going to pick someone randomly from the comments um to send a copy of this book yay <laughs> so i see um thirsty wolves yeah she said your curls are always popping <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> okay so let's get into today's topic Yes. So as um, Bola mentioned, we're going to talk about how to save on a low income or low budget. Um, and we're going to go into ways that maybe um, uh, we, ways that we haven't thought about. Um, of course, you know, budgeting and, and um, spending less than you earn is um, a, a good uh, tip to use. Um, but there's also other ways, um, and, and you know, it could be a little bit challenging to save money on a low income. Um, I know this from personal experience, uh, making uh, at the beginning, very beginning of my career, $16,000 a year, living in one of the most expensive cities in the world. Um, it, it, it was a pinch, but you know, I made it work, so it is possible. Um, you know, you don't have to sacrifice your future. You don't have to sacrifice um, your retirement. There, there's definitely ways that you can save um, money on a low income or low budget. So Yasmin, you said living on sixteen thousand dollars a year in New York City—that is crazy. Yeah, and you figured it out. You made it work. And you know, it, it's sometimes now finances when, when you're not earning as much as you want to in that moment, or when um, you're facing just limits, I mean, issues with income or uh, emergencies, it can be very uncomfortable. It can be very stressful. But like Yasmer said, it is possible to overcome it and navigate through it and get past it. So um, let's get into some of those tips. Yeah. Um, so tip number one is to see how you can lower your housing costs. Um, it, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, on average, people spend about 40% of their income on um, housing. So if you're renting or um, paying a mortgage, 
Um, so it's, it's a huge expense. So uh, if you can just try downsizing, um, that's a good way to save um, money there. Another way is if you have the space, you can rent out a room or a part of your home to someone. It's a good way to um, have passive income. Um, there's also uh, living in with a roommate. That's how I've been surviving here in New York City. My roommates are my mom and my sister. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, just thinking about how to cost, uh, how to, um, lower your cost of housing uh, will be very beneficial since a, a, a lot of your income or everyone's mm -hmm. income goes towards housing. Yeah, so the rule of thumb is, and you know, take the rule of thumb with a grain of salt. So the rule of thumb is that you don't wanna spend more than 33% 30, of your income on housing. But the reason why I say take that with a grain of salt is because it really depends on where you live and what the cost of housing is. Um, some cities are just extremely expensive, San Francisco, New York, where it's difficult for your for you to spend only 33% of your income on housing, even when you're being super, super creative. Whereas there are some places where some people spend 10 15% of their income on housing. But the rule of thumb is that you want to aim for spending no more than 33% because you don't want to be house poor or apartment poor, which means that you have all this, this expense, you have this expensive apartment, this expensive house, but then you can't afford to do the other things in your life. And so lowering your housing costs is one great way to just navigate managing your finances when you have a low income, a limited budget. Um, you know, like Yasmer said, it could be getting roommates, renting out portions of your of your house, moving further away from center city, right? The center city of any state okay. is of any city is usually the most expensive area. So how further how much further away can you move in terms of your commute away from family or friends, um, looking at other neighborhoods that might potentially be cheaper? Um, you know, when you have kids, that could also be a challenge because a lot of people move to neighborhoods for school districts, but you want to consider these things as you think about um, how to reduce your costs because housing costs are usually the biggest chunk of your budget. And when you think about housing costs, you're not just thinking about paying your rent or paying your mortgage. You're also thinking about all the things that come with the house, right? Um, you're going to have to pay for electricity, gas, depending on where you live, you know, water, repairs, all these different things add into your overall housing cost. So um, definitely want to look about are there look at other opportunities for you to downsize even right? You want to stay in the same neighborhood, but how about you move to a smaller apartment or even a smaller house um, if you're able to? That way you can free up some cash within within your budget. So as we're going through these tips, I'd love for you guys to share in the comments what has been working for you, especially given the times that we're in, talks about recession, inflation, tight budgets, what has been working for you as you focus on um, saving money. Um, Andrea also mentioned the key factor that as it relates to housing is your property taxes. So um, I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey is one of the highest property tax states in the country. <laughs> and when I think about my property tax, it hurts. And so those are the things <laughs> you want to factor in um, as you think about, you know, housing costs, especially if you own a home. Yeah, um, I, I didn't even think about that because I, I, I rent. <laughs> but that's a that's a that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So KH is in the UK and they said it's common to spend 50% or more of income and housing. Yeah, so that's not uncommon uncommon in places like New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, um, those expensive cities. Um, you know, so again, what ways can you you might not be able to move, right? Uh, but can you bring someone in to occupy a room for a limited period of time, a family member and just somebody to to help reduce that those costs, especially if you have the space. And it can even be temporarily until you, you know, you start feeling more comfortable uh, about how much you have saved until you're able to increase your income and et cetera. Yes. The folks are sharing their, their tips in here. Okay. <laughs> Stacy says she eats less meat. She also dropped cable and got slang. Cable is a big expense. Yeah. Barry, Anita, you said live with your parents or family and friends if possible. These are all great tips. Yes. Yeah, so let's keep going. Yes. Yeah, so, um, someone did mention um, food and that is the, the next tip. That's another uh, category where we spend a lot of money. 
um, is food. So this includes groceries, it includes eating out, uh, ordering out. Do you um, want to find ways to sort of like limit how much you're eating out um, and um, just be mindful of like when you go to like the supermarket, go with a list, um, look at your pantry so you're not buying something that you already have at home. Um, with with whatever is going on, uh, not whatever, with what's going on right now, um, things are more expensive and that includes like takeout. So mm -hmm. I said this here before where like, uh, I think it was like last month I had uh, treated my mom, my sister and myself for like some Chipotle and I ordered it through Grubhub and it was like $70. <laughs> so <laughs> I, it was like- $70 Chipotle. <laughs> It was horrifying. So, um, you know, we're not about like um, uh, depriving yourself. Of course, if you if you want that kind of like stuff, you want to um, eat out, maybe um, go. Well, I think we lost Yasmer or you guys lost me. Uh, Yasmer, are you there? You him? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay that was weird <laughs> um so yeah so just you know if you're if you're um ordering takeout uh three times a week so we're, we're losing yasma i'll just pick up from where she left off and barry you gave some really good tips about shopping your pantry um Aldi, curbside pickup or delivery helps avoid impulse shopping. So these, you know, food spending is one area that can really, really impact your budget. And the, the issue with food spending is that you don't realize how it's impacting your budget because it's a small thing here, a small thing there, an extra few dollars at the grocery store, just buying this, you know, quick meal, this dinner, this takeout. And then by the time you look at your, your spending on food alone at the end of the month, you're like, oh my God, how much did I spend? So you really want to pay attention to your food shopping. Um, be intentional about planning when you go out to eat. If, some, if going out to eat is something that you like to do, build it into your budget and build it on your calendar so that it's not just, oh, I'm bored, I'm hungry, let's go out to eat. It's, we plan to go out to eat on Wednesdays. We're going to go on Wednesday. It's not Wednesday. Um, we're going to figure out something else. Anita mentioned shopping your pantry. So look at what you have in your house and then go online on Pinterest, go on Google, type in your ingredients and you will find recipes that you can make based on what you already have, right? So if you don't know what you want to make, you don't have any creative ideas, go online and do some searches based on what can I make with X, Y, Z. Um, the other thing is pre-packaged foods seem super convenient, like the cut fruits, the cut vegetables, um, the, the frozen meal seem super cheap and convenient, but sometimes it's more expensive to buy the pre-packaged things. Um, so you might as well just buy the fresh food yourself and cut it up in a few minutes, pack it up, put it in your freezer, put it in your fridge so that you can easily ac access it later. So you definitely want to keep this in mind. I'm definitely guilty of going to the store. I, I go to the store with a list, but a lot of times I will forget to look at what I have and I end up buying duplicates. But the good news is that you can return groceries. So if you come home and you realize you have duplicates and you need that money for something else, you can take it back. You can return. Uh, if you open up your fruit box and you realize that the fruit is bad, you can return that stuff. The store will give you back your money. Well, most grocery stores where I live will give you back your money. So be intentional about going. But again, if you find yourself overspending at the grocery store and you know it doesn't really fit into your budget, the same way you take that dress back to the mall, take those groceries back to the store. <laughs> and then Stacey also mentioned meal planning. So create a, a schedule, an outline of what you want to cook for the week. Find the recipes online. Uh, Pinterest is great in the sense that when you find a recipe, it'll give you the actual ingredients to buy and even the brand names. And there's lots of websites like recipes.com, et cetera, that will give you the actual ingredients. So you just buy exactly what you need. And then um, Andrea also says, use cash when grocery shopping. Um, if you have a card that has extra money on it, like your debit card, and you don't really have allocated uh, amounts for grocery shopping, you might buy what you see because you feel like it, because you know you're going to be able to pay for it. But if you go into the store with cash and you leave your wallet in your bag, in your trunk, um, and you only have $25, 
you cannot spend more than $25 in the store. Right? <laughs> um, and then also somebody mentioned buying in bulk. Uh, buying in bulk really depends, right? Because sometimes you buy things in bulk and it's just not stuff that you're going to use before you have to throw it out. So buy in bulk non-perishable items that you know you will use long term and not every non-perishable item is a good bulk purchase because sometimes it just sits there because you're never going to use it <laughs> you only need it like it's like you know you only need it like a little bit so just be mindful of that um so yeah pay attention to your food shopping you know get creative with with meal planning and uh being able to stretch what you have in your pantry to create and create like fun meals using online recipes um and then make sure that um, that you're also planning your schedule of when you're going to eat out and not just eating out impulsively. Um, if there are things that you tend to buy on the go, see if you can make them at home or see if you can buy those same items rather than and have it at home rather than buy it on the way. So for example, if you drink uh, Coke Zero, right? I drink Coke Zero. And if I were to buy a bottle at the pizza shop, they're going to charge me $3. But I can buy a whole case of 12 cans for like $4 from the grocery store. So those are the things that you want to, and I can always take that can with me and put ice in my in my water bottle, whatever. So those are the things that you want to think about. Yasmer, someone is asking, where is your t-shirt from? <laughs> Evergirlfinance.com. Yes, Evergirlfinance.com slash shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite t-shirts <laughs> I, I should i need to wear mine more often okay <laughs> let's keep yes. going <laughs> yes. um i just wanted to add like uh one more thing to that um because it, it just this reminds me of like a, a story that i have but um so when you are invited um by your friends to eat um to eat out do you want to go with your friends um you know don't don't you don't feel like you have to go by like their suggestion um i remember a friend of mine last year um, we haven't seen each other in a while we wanted to get together and i had suggested a restaurant not really like looking at like the pricing but she noticed and she's like yasmi are you crazy we're not going there <laughs> we're gonna go to somewhere cheaper so we ended up like going mm -hmm. into a, a local um mexican restaurant and it was great it was fun um so you know just make suggestions with your friends you can let them know um you know if you feel comfortable hey i'm on a budget right now um can we find somewhere where it's like a little cheaper um and yeah, just do that. Don't feel pressured. Like you have to go and spend a lot of money <laughs> yeah. out with your friends. Yeah. It's okay to say no. And it's okay to state the amount of how much you have to spend on, you know, that eating out. I see people talking about my Coke Zero. Yes. <laughs> we only drink Coke Zero around here. We don't drink regular Coke. We do not drink Diet Coke. Um, Diet Coke and Coke Zero, for all of you guys who think they taste the same, they do not. And we sure <laughs> as heck do not drink Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> don't come for me. Uh-oh. <laughs> don't get Pepsi here. <laughs> I actually don't have any Coke Zero today. I ran out, so I'm drinking water. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, third tip is to find free or affordable uh, entertainment um that's another um expense that we don't really think about um maybe because we're not like doing it often and then when we do we like spend in a big way but you don't have to um there are um like for example if you like to go to the movies i like to go to the movies um they, there's there's matinees so there's you know just look into like your um movie theater like what day and time that is some movie theaters are like oh saturdays at like 10 a.m and i know people are yeah. like why am i gonna go <laughs> but but you you know it's a it's a good way it's, it's more affordable um i know amc theaters uh on tuesdays they cut their uh, movie tickets in half so if you go on a tuesday that could be tuesday anytime um you can see uh, a movie half half off um i don't buy food in the movie theater because they're ridiculously expensive what i do is that i eat before going to the movies or right after um, i take my big bag just... and i put all my kids snacks in it see i <laughs> i don't know if i should say that. 
I do that too. <laughs> I take my, my big bag or my coat that has all the big pockets. <laughs> Yeah, I I did the same too. I was like, I'm not gonna try to do that. But yes, that's actually good. Just take a snack with you. Um, there's also um, uh, museums that offer um, free or affordable admission. Um, I am fortunate to live um, near a lot of museums here in New York City, and the good thing about it is that. Um, if I go to um, one of the museums and present my ID, because I live in the neighborhood, I can go in for free or all I have to do is give a donation and, mm -hmm. I, and, and I can go in. Again, it could be something as small as like $2. Um, so definitely look into that. And there's also Groupon um, where you can find entertainment um, at a very low price. Um, I love using that website. I go on there for ideas on like, you know, if I wanted to go eat out or, you know, I wanted, I don't know, like to have like a spa day, um, <laughs> um, do things with my friends mostly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, definitely looking for free entertainment. Um, you know, sometimes you, you feel like you have to pay for everything because of where your friends or family want to go. But again, there's free museum Saturdays. I know a lot of museums in a lot of cities in the U.S. do first Saturdays free or first weekends free, or you can always go on their website to find out. And you can basically visit the, the museum at certain times um, to, to, um, uh, to, to tour the places. Uh, AT&T offers free HBO Max by the way, if you guys have AT&T. Uh, and I know that there are some other phone services that offer free subscription services to the the streaming platforms. So that's personally worth looking into. Like we were paying for HBO Max and then I realized I have AT&T and they offered it for free as part of my package. Definitely look into And then it's sometimes it can be hard to cancel cable. So we still have cable because my husband watches live sports and people who love live sports don't play with their live sports. I don't watch any live sports, but it's like this can cause serious problems if there's no live sports. So you definitely want to look at your cable bill and determine what you don't need because your cable bill is structured in tiers, right? So the first tier might be all your basic channels. The second tier might be live sports. The third tier might be premium channels. And a lot of times when they're selling you the package, they're selling you combined tiers, but you might only want basic channels and uh, sports. Mm -hmm. And I used to work for a cable company in my corporate America days. And we used to, I used to get free cable. The free, the whole thing was free. Every single nice. channel and pay-per-view was heavily discounted. I think we got like 70% off. So I had no concept of what cable bill was. And then when I left that job, you know, they were like, oh, do you want to just move over all of your, your services to your paid account? I'm like, sure. And I get my bill and it's like $600. I was like, what? <laughs> no, cancel this, cancel that, cancel this, cancel that. Take it off. So definitely look at your cable bill and determine, you know, where are you um, paying for stuff that you don't watch, right? A lot of times you will get a package deal, a better deal if you have cable, internet, and like cell phone service or like home phone service with your provider. So look at um, that as well to see how you can save money there if you need to have cable. Otherwise, streaming services are great. Um, there's also lots of free streaming services um, or very low cost. Like YouTube has a streaming service that's very inexpensive. I believe the Peacock streaming service is free. Um, and there's a couple other free ones. Um, if you have a smart TV, for example, Samsung smart TV has a free streaming um, series of channels on the smart TV and they show, you know, really awesome shows. So um, Barry said, I'm not going to tell you to share streaming services, share <laughs> your passwords and your login. <laughs> well, a lot of these platforms now have limits to how many of your, how many people can um, share. There is one comment I saw on here. Great point. Um, me 77 for sure. There's one point I saw on here about food. I wanted to go back to somebody left a comment, I believe. So Stacy, she said for people who don't cook different meals, you don't cook a zillion different meals, or you don't have time to try recipes, create a capsule meal plan where you rotate 15 or 20 mm -hmm. meals or less. That's super smart. Like just rotate meals. I have like six meals. I rotate. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's it. A good idea. But that's a really great idea. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I see a lot of comments in here. So Andrea says um, she shared a tip 
about uh i just lost the screen okay she shared a tip about getting shopping around for better car insurance rates yeah so once a year i always do that not just car insurance but even cell phone rates even cable rates if you have competitors in your in your um area they want to keep you um they may offer you a better rate or you may find a better rate by doing by shopping around so definitely looking to better car insurance rates at least once a year cell mm -hmm. phone rates and cable bill rates as well okay so we still have a few more tips so we've talked about thinking about how to lower your housing co costs being mindful about spending money on food finding free or affordable um entertainment and then uh yasna what's your next point um so the next one is someone um mentioned it um but the cash envelope system mm -hmm. um it works well it's better than using a card because then you know when you're using a car you're not really like mindful of what you're spending but when you take um cash then you're like you know you're more careful of like the items that you choose and what you're buying um so the way that the um cash envelope system works is that you um you know, you set up your budget and then you put the amount that you set up in your budget in envelopes um, so that, you know, when you go out, you're not overspending. Um, I find it that when I use cash, I spend less. So um, definitely something um, we encourage you all to try. Yes. So, uh, by the way, Anita is dropping some gems here. She's talking about... Um, her library, um, hold on, what did you see, Anita? The comments are like going really quickly. So she talked about libraries. Uh, she gets access for free through her library to museums, the zoo, and LinkedIn Learning. And then she also talked about looking at your cell phone offers. She got a free year of HBO Max through her Am Amex card. I got HBO Max through my AT&T phone uh, service. So um, yeah, so you asked me what you were saying about the cash envelope system. I've heard people tell me that cash envelope is unrealistic because I can't put all my cash in envelopes and carry it around. And so it is not unrealistic. You just have to create a hybrid that works for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I find that for most people who leverage a cash envelope system, it's based on a hybrid model, which means that there are certain bills that you automate where, you know, maybe your, your mortgage payment, obviously you're not going to find, you're not going to take cash to the mortgage companies, wherever you don't know where they are, right? You live in New yeah. Jersey or Colorado. So it makes sense to automate those types of payments. You automate your Netflix payment, you automate your cell phone payment. It comes out of your bank account, but then for your day-to-day -day spending, you know, you then use the the envelope method where you have an envelope where you put your grocery money for the next two weeks until you get paid. You have an envelope where you put um, your your eating out money, your um, getting your hair and nails done money, whatever it is. You have these envelopes for your day to day expenses where you don't need you don't necessarily need to automate them, right? And you can spend from that envelope. And once that money is done, based on your budget, then it's done, right? And if you don't spend from one envelope, you can move the money into another envelope. There are mm -hmm. apps that allow you to create quote unquote digital envelopes. You can check your app store. But the key with the envelope system is number one, you wanna make sure you're keeping your envelopes safe, right? So securely in your handbag, in a binder. Um, and number two, you wanna make sure that um, you are sticking to spending just on those envelopes, right? So. You're, you you buy groceries, your envelope is finished, then you're like, oh, I'm just going to use my debit card because I have a spare $100 here. That's not how it works. So mm -hmm. you want to automate what needs to be automated and then fo focus on using cash for the, the categories you designate you want to use cash for. So you might decide, you know what, I'm going to use the envelope system for just three areas where I struggle, right? Groceries, eating out, stuff for my kids. Those could be three areas that, you know what, I always overspend every month, so I'm only going to use envelope specific cash for these three categories. Using the envelope system doesn't mean that you need to change your whole budget and everything has to be in cash. You can just pick and choose what areas you're struggling with and give yourself a fixed amount of money for those areas as well. But it definitely is a, a great way to be more intentional because when you're bringing out the bills from your wallet, you're it's not just like... When you swipe a card, you don't see the numbers. You don't see the, you don't see the money go. You just yeah. see the page, you know, on the thing. But when you're spending cash, you have to count it, and then you have to look in your envelope and see. Wow, I just gave out 15 bills. I only have three bills. <laughs> There's some psychological. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so definitely, um, 
you know, think about that. And then someone asked about saving. Um, automation definitely works best because when you automate your savings, you're likely to save more money because you don't have that mental debate whether or not you save because the money's already gone. So can you automate your savings? Can you have your payroll uh, deposit X amount of money every time you get paid into savings? Or can you set up that whenever you get paid that same day, a certain amount of money comes out or a certain percentage comes out, right? So many payrolls will allow you to set up uh, percentages of your income to go to a savings account. You can look at that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all about getting creative with, um, minimizing how much you spend and paying attention to to how you are spending so that you can find opportunities to save. The other thing I want to talk about really quickly, which is um, not really a topic of this, but it's that when it comes to cutting back and saving money, low income, limited budget, there's only so much you can cut back on, right? Because at the end of the day, you still need to live somewhere. You still need to eat something, <laughs> And you still need to live your life. So you get, we're talking about cutting back, but we do understand that there's only so much that you can cut back. You cannot cut out your whole life because you have to live mm -hmm. life, right? So once you have cut back what you can cut back, the next thing I want you guys to think about is how can I increase my income? How can I get a better paying job? Maybe a part-time job, maybe start a low cost side hustle that can bring in some revenue. Maybe look around your house, your kitchen, your garage and see what you can sell on Facebook marketplace, Poshmark, et cetera, to bring in some cash. So you want, don't, and this is where I, I don't want you to focus on a lack mindset. I'm going to cut, cut, yeah. cut, cut, cut. Don't just focus on cutting, right? It's great to cut because we get to save, but don't stay there. Don't stay there because then you may start to become that person who has this lack mentality. Oh no, we can't spend that. Oh no, we can't do that. I'm cutting back, cutting back. We all know people like that who are perpetually cutting back, who never do anything, who never yeah. want to spend money. And there's nothing wrong with cutting back, but we don't want to develop this lack mentality. We want to think abundant. So yes, we have cut back for the for the sake of wanting to save, but now how can we expand to bring in more income? And this means getting uncomfortable, right? Working extra hours, part-time jobs, side hustle, interviewing for a better job. But the whole idea is bringing more money in, pursuing an abundance mindset for yourself. I just wanted to state that because you know, we're talking about cutting back, but don't get stuck there. Also think about how can you bring more money in? Okay, so I'm off of my soapbox. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I think you have another point, yes. <laughs> yes, um, so these tips are um, meant to be temporarily. Of course, if you, if you like it, um, yes, because, you know, you want to save for other goals, but I totally agree with Bola. It's not, we don't want to create that kind of, that lack mentality. Um, I don't, I don't think it's healthy. So like, as we mentioned, like this is just for like, um, if you are on uh, low income or limited budget. And so it's temporarily while you get a better paying job or you start your, your side hustle, your own business, um, things like that. But then the next and last tip um, it's not temporarily, this is something like you want to do your entire life and it's to take care of your health. Yes. Um, in this country, healthcare is very expensive and we can't necessarily cut down on that. So it's best that we take preventative measures. So exercising a little bit more, um, eating right, um, Exercising doesn't mean that you have to get a very expensive gym membership. There's um, exercise videos that are for free on YouTube. Um, there's apps that offer um, free exercise that you can do at home. Go outside. Um, yeah, go outside. Even walking 30 minutes a day, that's exercising. Um, and with eating right, um, People think that um, eating healthy uh, is expensive because they think, oh, I have to buy things organic. No, um, I, that, that's a myth. Um, eating healthy is not expensive. Um, it'll be expensive in the long run if you're not taking care of yourself mm -hmm. now. That's such, a, that's such a key point. Yes, yeah, so he, eating healthy is not expensive. Uh, for the sake of your well-being, it'll be more expensive in the long run if you if you get into medical issues. That's so, so important. 
Um, yeah, so your your so before your financial wellness, you know, like if you're going to create a priority of what's most important in terms of wellness, a lot of people think money is the most important part, but it's not. It is your health and mental wellness because if you are unwell, you cannot do anything to make money. If you cannot get out of bed, if you are sick, even if you're making passive money, you cannot enjoy your money. So your health and your mental wellness are priority, whether you're earning a low income, a high income, limited budget, no limited budget, you want to prioritize your health and your mental wellness. Because when you are healthy pursuing you know good health you're mentally okay you are you are in prime position to be to be um optimistic right you are in prime position to get creative to do things to change your situation increase your income cut back earn more all those things but it starts with you being well you have the energy you have the motivation you you know when you feel good so it's really important to take care of yourself so incredibly important mm -hmm. um you know and then the money part is secondary because if you look at studies on the happiest people in the world they come from the poorest countries in the world and they earn nothing they earn pennies mm -hmm. a day a month right a dollar a week whatever it is and they are the happiest people in the world because their heads are in check their health is in check despite the little that they have so you want to prioritize that it is so so important um money is not everything without your health money is actually nothing right um so definitely take care of yourself and i've seen just going back to the uh, earning more, Anita mentioned some really great tips here about look at the life skills you have that can be used. So driving, tutoring, babysitting, customer service. There is a podcast episode on Clever Finance about, it's it's called how uh, a lady used DoorDash to pay off her student loans. And she was a certified, I believe a certified accountant. She had an advanced degree. She couldn't get a job and she started doing DoorDash. And I think she paid off like 70 something thousand dollars in loans in one year. And she was driving from morning till evening. And she said, people will call her and say, what are you doing? And she would say she was running errands because she wanted to get that debt out of her life. She wasn't earning money and she didn't want to just wait for her job to come, which took a few months for her to get it. So what can you do to get creative? When we say earn more money, sometimes it's not going to be comfortable, right? When I first graduated college, in between getting my first job and finishing college, I needed to get a job because I wanted to make money. And I had my degree, but I still got a job at CVS working at the photo department, earning like five fifty an hour because I had time and I had no money. So don't be ashamed to work at less than your skill sets temporarily to achieve your goals, right? Don't be um, embarrassed to work a part-time job. You don't have to tell anybody your business. You don't want people to know. Tell them you're busy. You're watching Netflix. You couldn't answer your phone, whatever. <laughs> focus on what you need to focus on to do what you need to do. But there's no shame in doing what you need to do to put food on the table, to take care of your kids, right to provide for your family don't let people make you feel bad because you're not working the dream job or living the dream life yet half the time they are lying to themselves and lying to you so just focus on yourself and thank you anita yes check out the articles on clever Oil finance we have so many articles on jobs for students stay-at-home moms um remote jobs um, and even about starting your own side hustle, freelance writing, becoming a virtual assistant. We have so much content. Just go to cleverwellfinance.com slash blog and click on the business slash side hustles or earn more categories and you'll find all of these articles. So yes, that's how, that's um, what we wanted to cover. I see someone talk about building an emergency fund on a low income. Maybe we'll talk about that next time or in one of the um, upcoming um, lives. But yes, yeah, so Thank you guys for being here. We have a giveaway book and I already know who it is because she's been popping in the comments and it is Stacey Jordan. It <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so please send an email to cleverwellfinance.com. No, to hello at cleverwellfinance.com. And just tell us one of the comments that you shared here in the chat so that we know that it's you and we'll get this sent over to you. Um, don't forget, this comes out July 6th next week. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> so exciting. If you haven't picked up a copy, please do. And if you are in New York City, uh, the book launch is on um, Jan July 9th. <laughs> I'm so tired. I am so tired, people. I, I 
I slept at 12. I woke up at 4.30. I'm almost delirious right now. But anyway, uh, <laughs> if you are in New York City, the book launch is on July 9th. We would love to see you. Yasna will be there. I'll be there. Esther will be there. Um, other folks from Team Clever World Finance will be there. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have mimosas and hors d'oeuvres, and we're going to talk about this book. So to get the details, um, go to either our YouTube community page or visit Clever World Finance on Instagram. The very first posts are details of the event in New York City on July 9th. It's Saturday, and we'd love to spend time with you guys. So pick up a copy. If you borrow books from your local library, ask them to order this book, right? Um, so I want you to support me, but not at the expense of your um, your budget. So, you know, if you borrow books from your library, contact your library, have them order this book. This book is going to be available as an ebook, audiobook. I'm recording the audiobook tomorrow. And I just would love your support. So, yes, we'll be back next week, Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> yes, do you have anything to add? <laughs> no, thanks, everyone, for being here. And um, leave us a comment on any topics that you would like for us to talk about in the future. Yes, thank you guys so, 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 so much. And Stacey, don't forget to send us that email um, once you get a chance. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.